Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 6. Ross Bagwell Sr a titan of cable TV and East Tennessee's visionary. Ross Bagwell Sr., a pioneering force in the cable TV industry and a key figure in establishing East Tennessee as a production hub, passed away on Thanksgiving at the age of 91. His family remembers him as a successful entrepreneur, a mentor, and a creative genius, celebrated for his profound impact on television production. Bagwell's journey began with a passion for creating programming his career took off after studying at NYU and the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and starting as a page boy at NBC. His rise through the ranks led him back to Knoxville in 1964, where he worked at Wait TV before venturing into advertising. In 1975, together with his late son, Ross Bagwell Jr., and daughter D. Haslam, Bagwell founded Sinatel Productions. Under his guidance, Sinatel became one of the largest independent production companies in the U.S., contributing hits like Nickelodeon's Hey Dude and America's Castles. In 1994, Bagwell Sr. sold Sinatel to Scripps Howard, leading to the birth of Scripps Networks and HGTV in Knoxville. Post-sale, Bagwell continued his creative journey with Ross Television Productions and Bagwell Entertainment LLC, producing for networks like Discovery and HGTV. D. Haslam later took over Bagwell Entertainment, renaming it Riviar Media and producing renowned shows like Whale Wars and Trading Spaces. Bagwell's legacy extends beyond his professional achievements to the lives he touched. Known for his genuine care for people, he was a father figure to many, always offering a caring word and support. He leaves behind his daughter D, her husband Jimmy Haslam, several grandchildren, six great-grandchildren, and numerous nieces and nephews, Tribute to Ross Bagwell Sr. Number 5. Eddie Marins, a giant in the world of golf. Eddie Marins, a venerable icon in the golfing community, passed away at the age of 91 on November 1st in Los Angeles. Known affectionately as the Lil Pro, Marin's stature in the golf world towered far beyond his physical height of 5 feet 7 inches. He was celebrated not only as an accomplished PGA professional and coach, but also as a revered teacher and philanthropist. Marin's played over 200 PGA Tour events and won twice. However, his true legacy lay in his role as a mentor and teacher. His journey took him to prestigious clubs such as Marion Golf Club and Westchester Country Club before he became the head pro at Bel Air Country Club in 1962, a position he held with distinction until 2003. His prowess as a teacher was evident in his wide range of students, from tour pros like Corey Pavin and Raymond Floyd, to Hollywood legends including Dean Martin, Sean Connery, and Jack Nicholson. He authored Swing the Handle, Not the Clubhead, sharing his golf wisdom with a broader audience. In 1975, Marins embarked on a parallel journey as UCLA's head men's golf coach, leading the Bruins to 64 wins, including three Pac-10 titles and the 1988 NCAA championship. Marins' passion for golf extended beyond the course. He founded Friends of Collegiate Golf to support junior golf in Southern California, raising over $10 million for young golfers nationwide. He also established UCLA's first golf scholarship. Recognized for his significant contributions, Marins was inducted into numerous halls of fame and remained a beloved figure in the golf community. His legacy will endure not just in the accolades and championships, but in the hearts of those he inspired and taught. Tribute to Eddie Marins. Number 4. James Phillip, a formidable force in Illinois politics. James Phillip, a renowned figure in Illinois politics, passed away at his Wooddale home on November 21st at the age of 93. Phillip, a Republican, 
had an impactful career in the Illinois General Assembly, serving both in the House of Representatives and the Senate. His decade-long tenure as president of the Illinois Senate cemented his legacy as a pivotal force in state government. Born on May 26, 1930, in Elmhurst, Illinois, Philip's early life was shaped by service and dedication. He attended York Community High School, followed by studies at Kansas City Junior College and Kansas State College. His commitment to public service was evident early on as he served in the United States Marine Corps during the Korean War. Philip's political journey began with his election as York Township Auditor in 1965, the same year he became president of the Illinois Young Republicans. His legislative career started in the Illinois House, where he represented the 37th District, making significant contributions to various committees. He later moved to the Illinois Senate, continuing to play a crucial role in state politics. As Senate Minority Leader and subsequently President of the Illinois Senate, Philip was known for his influential role in shaping legislation and policy. His blunt remarks and straightforward approach often made headlines, earning him both admiration and criticism. His positions on various issues, including education reform and criminal justice, reflected his commitment to public service and governance. Philip's contributions to Illinois politics were immense, and his influence will be long remembered. His ability to navigate complex political landscapes and drive significant legislative changes marked him as a key figure in the state's political history. Tribute to James Philip. Number 3. Paul Sait, a rugby league luminary and South Sydney hero. Paul Sait, an iconic figure in Australian rugby league and a celebrated South Sydney Rabbitohs player, passed away at the age of 76 following a prolonged illness. Known for his remarkable skill and versatility on the field, Sait's legacy in the sport is indelible, marked by his significant contributions to the Rabbitohs' success in the 1970s. Sayit's rugby league career was nothing short of stellar. He played 165 first-grade games for South Sydney, a tenure highlighted by premiership victories in 1970 and 1971. His leadership and prowess on the field also earned him the honor of captaining the team. Sayit's exceptional talent was not limited to club football. He represented Australia 16 times and played six matches for New South Wales showcasing his skills on international and state stages. South Sydney Rabbitohs CEO Blake Solly spoke highly of Sate, placing him among the greats like Sattler, McCarthy, Coote, and Sims from the club's third golden era. Sate's recognition as one of the best centers in the club's history was cemented when he was named in the Rabbitohs' dream team in 2004. His contributions to the club were further honored with a life membership in 1991. Paul Sait's passing is a significant loss to the rugby league community. His remarkable career, dedication to the Rabbitohs, and contributions to the sport have left an enduring legacy. The South Sydney Rabbitohs fans and the wider rugby league community mourn his passing and extend their deepest condolences to his family and friends. Tribute to Paul Sait. Number 2. Jerome Markson, an architectural visionary in urban housing. Jerome Markson, a distinguished Canadian architect known for his innovative approach to urban housing, passed away in Toronto on November 18 at the age of 94. Markson's legacy is deeply embedded in the architectural landscape of Toronto, with his groundbreaking work in multifamily urban housing projects like Alexandra Park Public Housing setting him apart in his field. His early exposure to diverse cultures and environments likely influenced his unique architectural vision. Markson's academic journey began at the University of Toronto in 1948, where he was part of a new wave of post-war architects. His education was further enriched by summer courses at the Cranbrook Academy of Art, under the tutelage of Eliel Serinin, which profoundly impacted his design style and philosophy. Markson's career was marked by innovative use of design elements like light wells, 
atriums, courtyards, and green spaces, seamlessly blending indoor and outdoor spaces. He started his own practice in 1955 in post-World War II Toronto, making significant contributions to the city's architectural development. His notable works include the Goldblatt Residence, 1955, Bathurst Jewish Center, Group Health Center, Alexandra Park, David B. Archer, Cooperative Housing, and Market Square Condominiums. In 2022, Markson's extraordinary contributions to Canadian architecture were honored with the prestigious gold medal by the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada. This accolade was a testament to his impactful and lasting contributions to the field. Jerome Markson's death marks the end of an era in Canadian architecture. His visionary work, characterized by a keen sense of community and a unique blending of spaces, continues to inspire architects and city planners. He leaves behind a legacy of innovation and excellence that has profoundly shaped the urban fabric of Toronto and beyond. Tribute to Jerome Markson. Today's top headlines. News 1. Michael Chiarello's cause of debt announced. The renowned chef and Food Network star has tragically passed away at the age of 61, following an allergic reaction leading to anaphylactic shock, as reported by the Napa County Coroner's Office. The incident, which took place last month, saw Chiarello suffer a heart attack triggered by the anaphylactic shock. Although he was resuscitated at the hospital, he later succumbed to hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, a condition resulting from prolonged oxygen and blood deprivation to the brain. While it remains unclear if the allergic reaction was food-related, it has been confirmed that Chiarello had cocaine in his system at the time of his death. However, the coroner's office clarified that his passing was not a result of a drug overdose, but the cocaine use was considered a significant condition in his death. News 2 the family of 62-year-old Johnny Hallman is demanding justice after newly released body cam footage shows the moments leading to his death on August 10, 2023, post-police tasing. Hallman, a church deacon, repeatedly stated, I can't breathe, during the altercation with Atlanta police officer Kiran Kimbrough, who has since been fired for violating protocol. The incident, which escalated from a traffic ticket dispute saw Hallman refuse to sign the citation and led to a physical confrontation. The officer's body cam captured Hallman's struggle and repeated pleas for air, culminating in him becoming unresponsive post-tasing. Hallman was later pronounced dead at Grady Memorial Hospital. Hallman's daughter Arnita, in a recent news conference, stated her father was murdered on the streets of Atlanta, urging full prosecution of Kimbrough. The officer's attorney, however, argues that Kimbrough's actions were consistent with his training and lawful. News 3. In Hinsdale, New Hampshire, the quiet life of Jeffrey Holt, a local groundskeeper, was marked by his modesty and eccentricities. Known for his intellect and love for automobiles and model railroading, Holt's obituary described him as fundamentally modest and demure. However, upon his passing, the small town of 4,200 residents was left in disbelief as they learned of his secret. Holt had accumulated a $4.2 million fortune through savvy investing in mutual funds. Holt's surprising fortune, now revealed to the public by the Associated Press, was earmarked entirely for the benefit of Hinsdale to support education, health services, recreation, and culture. Residents accustomed to seeing Holt on his lawnmower or reading newspapers in simple attire were taken aback by this revelation. News 4. Patricia Baraclough, a celebrated producer with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, passed away. Her death was announced by former Queensland Senator Cheryl Kernot, highlighting Baraclough's remarkable four-decade career in television and radio. Best known for her work on This Day Tonight and as a co-creator of Australian Story, Baraclough collaborated closely with renowned presenter Kerry O'Brien. Her tenure at ABC also included a significant role in 7.30 AKT. While her battle with cancer was known, the official cause of her death has not been disclosed. Beyond her professional realm, Baraclough was an avid nature photographer, sharing her passion on Instagram. Her passing has drawn tributes from colleagues, friends, and admirers. 
Kerry O'Brien praised her as one of the very best in journalism. Barakloff's legacy of creativity, courage, and passion for nature leaves a lasting impact on the ABC community and beyond. News 5. Harold Hasselbach, a celebrated defensive lineman known for his role in the Denver Broncos' back-to-back -back Super Bowl victories in the 1990s, has died at the age of 56. The Broncos organization announced his passing, marking the end of Hasselbach's six-month battle with cancer. Hasselbach's remarkable consistency was evident as he played in 131 consecutive regular season and postseason games from 1994 to 2000. His notable contributions in 1998 included starting all three postseason games, culminating in the triumph at Super Bowl 33. Prior to his tenure with the Broncos, Hasselbach had a successful stint with the Calgary Stampeders in the Canadian Football League, winning the Grey Cup in 1992. Originally from the Netherlands, Hasselbach moved to Canada for his high school education. News 6. An 87-year-old pilot from Arizona, LZM McDonald, tragically died on November 23rd after his Mooney M20, a single-engine plane, crashed in a Texas parking lot, igniting into flames. McDonald was en route to visit his family in Dallas when the incident occurred just shy of Plano Air Park Dallas Airport, less than a mile away. The crash, happening around 6 p.m., occurred in a shopping center's parking lot, causing damage to a nearby restaurant, as reported by Dallas's WFAA-TV. According to Brian Rutt, an investigator with the National Transportation Safety Board, the plane not only caught fire upon impact, but also set ablaze an unoccupied vehicle in the vicinity. Thankfully, no ground injuries were reported. The investigation is still in preliminary stages, with officials seeking any potential data recorder or communication device from the plane. McDonald had been in touch with air traffic control prior to the crash, with dialogue indicating difficulties in landing due to darkness. He had considered diverting to another airport in Addison, Texas before communication ceased. News 7. NYU Law School is mourning the loss of Professor of Clinical Law Emerita Holly McGuigan, who passed away on November 15th. Dean Troy McKenzie praised her remarkable 30-year tenure, highlighting her groundbreaking work in the criminal trials of battered women and family violence. McGuigan was renowned for her interdisciplinary research, notably her influential publication, Explaining Without Pathologizing, Testimony on Battering and Its Effects. Her passion for justice and cultural considerations in domestic violence cases led her to serve on several advisory boards, including the Family Violence Prevention Fund. A beloved educator, McGuigan taught courses on evidence and global public service lawyering. She was also recognized as the 2014 Great Teacher of the Year by the Society of American Law Teachers for her extraordinary compassion, intellect, and commitment to her students and community. Number one. Rona Hartner, a multifaceted artistic soul gone too soon. Rona Hartner, the esteemed Romanian actress, dancer, and singer, passed away on November 18th at the age of 50 after a brave battle with lung and brain cancer. Hartner, a dynamic and versatile artist, was a beloved figure in the entertainment industry, known for her profound impact on both cinema and music. Her breakthrough came in 1996 when she met French director Tony Gatliff, she was cast as the lead actress and soundtrack performer in The Crazy Stranger, a role that was filmed in Romania and earned her widespread acclaim, including the Bronze Leopard Award at the Locarno International Film Festival and a Caesar Award nomination. Hartner's relocation to France over two decades ago marked a new chapter in her career, where she continued to shine as an actress, singer, and dancer. She explored various genres, including jazz, rock, reggae, and blues, showcasing her talents in guitar, saxophone, and piano. In collaboration with David Lynch, Hartner released the maxi-single You're More Than That in 2003, and her album National It Vagabond followed in 2008. Her artistic endeavors were not just limited to acting and music. She was a true embodiment of a multidisciplinary artist. Hartner's passing leaves a void in the hearts of her fans and the artistic community. She is survived by her family, including her sister Rinda, who shared the news of her final moments, inviting prayers and good thoughts for Hartner. Rona Hartner's legacy as a versatile and passionate artist will continue to inspire future generations and her contributions to the arts will be cherished and remembered.
her courage, creativity, and vibrant spirit will remain a beacon of inspiration in the world of cinema and music. Tribute to Rona Hartner. <laughs>